Hi, I'm Larry. Um, I have Frances Trumbull here with me today. Um, she works here at the Southern, Southern San Diego American Indian Health Center. Um, so can you please introduce yourself and tell us your name and title and what tribe you're from? Sure thing. So my name is Frances Trumbull. I am the Youth Services and Patient Experience Manager here at San Diego in the American Indian Health Center. Uh, previously, I was the Quality Improvement Manager um, and I am an enrolled member of the Rosewood Sioux Tribe. Um, it's primarily on my, my mom's side and my dad's side is from Ogallala. Nice. Okay, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about you? Yeah, sure thing. So I live here in San Diego, um, but I grew up in Mission, South Dakota. I lived there with my mom and my family until I was about like 12 or 13, and then I moved to Rapid City, South Dakota. And from there, I lived with my sister and her children, and then I went to school there at St. Thomas More High School. Um, and after I graduated high school, I did a gap year at North Mount Hermon in Massachusetts. And from the gap year, I went to um, Wheaton College, graduated there, and I worked in an inpatient unit in Boston, um, and then moved up to San Diego where I literally stumbled on this clinic. Um, like I went, <laughs> I came here for services, and I accidentally went into the admin office, which used to be downstairs, like very accessible to like patients. And I accidentally stumbled in there, ended up talking with Doug Flaker, in my background in some data management and with behavioral health, um, I um, was offered a contract to help with the youth service back like in 20, like 15. Um, and then started working here and just have been integrated into the clinic in different capacities since then. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies? Do you have things you like yes. to do? Yes. <laughs> um, me and my boyfriend typically um, backpack in the Sierras. Uh, we backpack a lot. I would say it's like my biggest oh. Um, like coping skill and biggest hobby and so we were planning for next year because we didn't go very much this year um, partly due to COVID and the other part due to fires um, but backpacking is a huge hobby oh, yeah. um, but in the winter I really like beading um, I started recently like last year um, calling my sister a lot like on YouTube um, and that's been a really grounding hobby is um, that something you beat it? No, I wish. Um, <laughs> no, my cousin made this. That's beautiful. Yeah, I know he did a good job. I was like, oh my gosh, so beautiful. I love the colors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mostly backpacking and beading, um, hanging out with my dog. I have a little, well, she's not that little, she's like 60 pounds, but um, mm -hmm. I have a little Tijuana mutt, um, Hazel, big part of my family. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, like those are my main hobbies. Hazel, I think you mentioned the Hazel was from a name. You named Hazel for a reason. Do you have a name? You named Hazel for a reason. There was a story behind that, right? Yeah, well, I mean, Hazel's name that we got uh, when we adopted her because we adopted her from the Humane Society and then we tried to rename her Dakota because, like, South Dakota is so really like, oh, okay, oh yeah. it's such a cute name and she's a cute dog. Um, so we tried for like maybe two weeks to name her Dakota. But like she was like kind of like a puppy. She was like a year old, and she's like a big dog. And so when we be giving commands like Dakota, like it was just harder to, you know, get those commands out to her. So we went back to Hazel. So now we have a joke that like remember that time we tried to name her Dakota, <laughs> but then she just um, was really attached to the name Hazel. So we ended up going back to yeah. Hazel. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the next question. Let's see. Um... What are you most passionate about in the urban native community? Um, quality of care and access, I would say, mm. are my biggest um, passions. Like I wanna get my master's in public health um, eventually. <laughs> I'm still on my journey to preparing for the GREs, but I would say those two items because you know it ties back um, my experience like I actually started here in 2015 but I ended up taking a leave of absence because um, my dad was diagnosed with cancer and so I went back home South Dakota for about maybe like four months or so and then he passed away and I came back and when we came back we are actually going through our first um, you know about of um, getting our patient center medical home recognition from NCQA and all I could think of as I was going through these standards, because the standards are about, you know, being proactive, 
making sure your patients have access to care, that you're building care plans with them, and that you're engaging them. And, you know, as we were going through these standards and trying to apply them here, all I could think of was, oh, I like wonder if my dad had had these things applied to him, if he'd still be alive. Mm, yeah. And then as I learned more about it, because that was really like my first experience with like a lot of quality stuff was like PCMH through NCQA. And then as I learned more about quality and what that means um, and about social terms of health, like I just, it all ties together and it's really one thing of offering good quality of care and making sure that you're addressing that. And I really believe that it's our health center's duty to do that for our community. Yeah. And so when I think about patients here in the community here, I always think of like, you know, if these patients were my dad and you know, what can we do to yeah. them, do for them so that they have long and healthy lives. Mm -hmm. um, so those are really deeply rooted passions because I just, I think of what we can do to prevent deaths like my father's because um, he had a certain cancer and it's very preventable. Like if you go for your annual checks or your wellness checks, or if he had had um, easy access to care, you know, or if there was a front office worker or an MA or a provider that had really engaged him and made it easy for him because his health literacy was fairly like not very high, you know, he wasn't really in the health field, so, um, you know, he didn't know a ton about, you know, health language or health literacy. Mm -hmm. And in Rapid, where we're from, there's one IHF facility, and like, historically, it's been known for like long waits, so if you go there, you're gonna be there all day, and like, it's really hard to get that access, mm -hmm. access to care, and so, and his provider in particular, like, wasn't a really engaging one. So yeah, I just think about that, like, those, these things are tied so deeply to like yeah, yeah. my own personal like experience with healthcare mm -hmm. and hoping that in the future we can have something where like if we have like because my dad was also very grumpy and not very patient so <laughs> he also wasn't like the best like patient but um you know going forward i think about how we can engage those kind of patients and make sure they have the tools to be empowered to you know so they can live their own healthy and happy life yeah, yeah. so those what are my kind? two passions Kind of walked into that uh, question. My next question was about, about the future. What do you see in the future of the of our clinic and our community? Um. Well, I am excited about it because I I'm excited towards what we're building, what we're building towards. Yeah. Um. Because when you look at things that determine um, a healthy life, you know, there's things that happen before you even get to the health center. So social determinants of health are like. Uh, having a job, your income, transportation, you have access to healthy foods, um, are you able to exercise, do you live in a safe neighborhood where you can exercise outside, like do you have access to gyms, um, so those are all social determinants of health and what I'm really excited to do in my capacity as the youth center manager um, with the youth and their families is really working to address those social determinants of health and look for resources to make sure we're taking care of the whole unit. Mm -hmm. Because as Native people, we know that, you know, it's not just me or I, it's we. It's me and my family, it's me and my community. So when I say I want to take care of the youth, I want to take care of like the youth, their families, and the community. Yeah. Um, and so that's the future that I'm like really excited to see is how we can integrate that more cohesively and more woven into the clinic where it's a really easy flow for if a family comes in and that, you know, has some food insecurity, we have resources right away where we can get them food or education about healthy foods. Um, that's the future I see and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited in this position to be able to address some of those things. Yeah, and then we can offer a lot of resources. Exactly, and I know that we already have offered a lot of resources and we have a lot of stuff um, already, but to build on that and to have it more yeah. because to offer more and be able to be a backbone or a resource for community members and patients is just um, the future that I see and that I really want to build towards. Yeah. I like that. Okay, next question. Uh, what is there about the challenges, difficulties you've experienced currently or currently experiencing that you can be thankful for? And what have you learned from what you, what have you learned and how have you grown? And we're kind of a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think of how to answer that. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like the experiences that I had growing up, I am incredibly grateful for, and where I am today. Um, like growing up, um, 
on the res, you know, our hospital, like where we had to go for when we were sick was like 20, 30 miles away. It's like 30 minutes away. And so when I was sick, I remember I had to be very sick for my mom to take me to the, ho take me to the hospital, not in a dangerous way, but just that, you know, the access to care was so hard. So when people say it's hard to get here, or, you know, like that they have these barriers, um, I feel grateful that I can empathize with that because I know what it is to have like limited access to healthcare. Um, and same thing with like food insecurity or um, even poverty. Like growing up, me and my sister and her kids, like we were on WIC and food stamps. And so I'm like proud of that, not proud of that, but yeah, I am actually like that, you know, we made it work with kids and stuff. Like we found recipes and ways to make it fun mm -hmm. and ways to make sure that the kids knew what healthy food was. Um, and I'm proud that, you know, I have that background and I can relate to a lot of people that, you know, are still on liquor food stamps because I know what it's like to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess like the biggest thing that I'm proud of in life is that I've always found my own way. So I've had a job since I was like 12, like on the reservation, I <laughs> reached out to the newspaper. I forget how I connected to like their little like tribal newspaper and when I was in middle school, whereas <laughs> I like would do little columns interviewing like my classmates and my teachers and then they pay me for that. And then when I moved up to Rapid and I was like 13 or 14, um, I got a job with the newspaper and I would deliver <laughs> newspapers on Saturday and Sundays and my sister and I laugh about it because <laughs> like, they're so heavy and like most people had like cars or something but I would just like, I had this big old bag and like I would slug it along and like I had to go back to our little apartment and like refill it to go deliver newspapers. <laughs> I was doing that until I was like 14 and wow. signing like, you know, contracts to be an employee. And then, you know, from there I've always had jobs. Like I worked in the restaurant industry while I was in high school and I had a job year round and I always had something lined up. And even when I was going to college, I had jobs lined up for when I got back. So like I was always working. And even at, even at um, college, um, Wheaton's like pretty, very small town. It's located in like Norton, Massachusetts, and it's like a really small town. And um, so they're like, and there's like pretty limited transportation. So like while I was there, I got a job working in the archives. So I was working while I was being an athlete, while I was at college, and then we we're on breaks. So I always had jobs lined up. And even when I, before I graduated, I went and found a job. So I had a smooth transition, and I've just always been working. And I'm proud that I've um, had that proactive attitude to kind of make my own way and I'm proud that I've, I didn't have to like drain my parents or ask them for money for stuff because I saw their need, um, their own financial needs, my family's financial needs, and I worked to make sure I was never a burden. Yeah. So I would say like it's one of the things I'm proud of. Yeah, I feel like they had some influence on how you've um, grown in your own life. You know? Yeah. yeah. I've always been surrounded by like, hardworking people in my family, and mm -hmm. I'm lucky that I have role models, my parents, and my sister, and my brothers, my brother, um, mm -hmm. little brother's brother-in-law, mm -hmm. um, to show me like what good hard work can accomplish. Yeah, definitely. It pays off for sure. Okay, uh, this will be the last question. What are some of the things that are offered when you work many people aren't aware of and could help people in the community? Our community. Offered here. Mm -hmm. um, that, that some people aren't aware of. You know, we have a lot of things that I think we are trying to do a lot of outreach, and so we're trying to let people know what we do here, what we offer, and what are some of the things that you can think of. I mean, I feel like sometimes you don't always like publicize, like you know, the Holly Dolly drive-through was like. I'm glad that a lot of people showed up and signed up mm -hmm. for it because that was a great event. It was. Just in line with like the Christmas spirit and the holiday spirit, which is super nice to see. But you know, we have case managers, um, we have great RNs who are happy and able to work with our community. Um, you know, like Dan and Ronnie and Christine. I think they do a great job, and they're very committed to taking care of our patients. Mm -hmm. um, so they're there for assistance if you need it. Um, our wellness department does good, like does a great job of like posting like the gentle stretching online. Um, I'm trying to think of like other capacities that we have. Like we have medical, dental, and behavioral health. So if you come here for a COVID test, for example, and like, you know, there's a lot of anxiety and stress and emotional distress that comes from that. 
you know, we have a behavioral health department that's full of people that are happy and very willing to help. Um, I'm not sure if people always know that when they, if they come here just for a COVID test or even if they have a COVID test somewhere else and like they're experiencing the anxiety and stress that comes with that kind of situation, you know, there are resources here to help um, our behavioral health providers. Um, yeah. Because I think right now, especially with the holidays and with um, COVID-19, it can be just like a really hard time, especially if you're isolating from family and stuff. Um, but you have supports here with our like behavioral health department. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think of other stuff like medical and dental, um, all great providers, mm -hmm. people that really care and like want to take care of people. Yeah. Um, I think we're very fortunate to have a staff that um, are really compassionate and empathetic. So yeah. they're here and that, you know, we'll find that help for you in any capacity. But um, yeah. Yeah, and they're all really friendly too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, our youth center, uh, we have Art with Larry on a weekly basis. Um, we have Cooking Matters. Yesterday, oh, yeah. Carolina made some amazing fasole. Oh, gosh. It was so good. Um, and I know that Richard DeCrane does a lot of stuff on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. And then going forward in January, we're actually going to have, um, if you have youth or anyone that would want to join, we're going to have like weekly crafting activities together. Um, like with Let's Get Crafty. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know Ethan for our youth is going to be doing gentle stretching as well. And then we're looking at future programming and also looking for feedback um, from the youth and the families and the community as to what kind of programming that you'd like to see. So if you have thoughts, like please, please, yeah. please feel free to reach out. We want to know what you want so we can use that information to shape our programming in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think it's really important that we get community feedback into what services, programming, activities, events that mm -hmm. we could provide that would help you. Um, so, you know, that we're going to work on sending out that survey soon so that way we can gather some feedback. So, if anyone watching has feedback, yeah, yeah, please feel free. Looking forward to that, definitely. Well, that's about it. Uh, thank you, Francis, for taking time, time out with us. and. Um, we appreciate all that you do too. I mean, we we're looking forward to uh, to a lot of good things here. We're actually expanding too, I think, um, in the future. So we'll have more more room to do things. Um, but yeah, we uh, appreciate your time, appreciate what you do, and and um, and we appreciate all you out there in uh, Facebook Live Land. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope to, we'll we'll. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about our next interview and we'll probably have more of these uh, as, the, as time goes on. So, um, it's a good thank opportunity you for you to know our staff. Yeah, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. And um, so, thank you. Have a happy holidays. You know, um, be safe and we will um, keep in touch. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>